This is East Carolina Hall of Famer and Utah Jazz first round draft pick Blue Edwards. You're listening to Pirate Basketball Overtime on the Sports Objective, your home for the best East Carolina hoops coverage. <laughs> Welcome into the Pirate Basketball Overtime here on the Sports Objective. Pirates get a huge win, 95-79 to 79 over the Western Carolina Catamounts. With us right now, man, the singer-songwriter from LaGrange, Kyle Barber. What's up? What's going on, Dave? Yes, working on my songwriting abilities tonight with the Ballad of Bubba Lowe that we will be debuting nationwide in the later Bubba episode Lowe. of the Sports Objective podcast. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's Ballad of Bubba Lowe, not Lowe. Remember we Bubba Row. Bubba Row. Hey, hey, yeah, what are the, hey yeah. Bubba Row, what's up, man? Uh, what a performance by the Pirates this afternoon. Um, you know, shot lights out. Offensively, it was uh, dang near about as well as you could play in the first half. Uh, defensively, uh, not too bad. And in the first half, you had some second chance opportunities that you'll hear Coach Dooley talk about here in a few minutes in his post game remarks, where um, we gave them a second and second chance, and they would knock down threes uh, on several occasions. So that's something we have to clean up. But uh, offensively, 59 points, um, one of the top, uh, what, top five halves all time. Uh, I think the, the most we'd ever scored was 64, and that was against St. Nice. Saint Andrews, yeah, is. which is obviously a non-Division one opponent. So, um, yeah, definitely one of the best halves we've ever played. And uh, we, we shot, what, 68 percent from the fl- from the floor now yeah, was that the most we've ever scored in a half against the division one opponent the other one was uh the, there's two times we scored 64 i looked it up today uh, atlantic christian in 19 all the way back to 1968 and then we tied again as Bo was talking about in 2012 so 64 is the most that i ever saw but i don't uh, so I'll have to look at it. that may be the most against division one opponent in a, in, in a half yeah, that's the possibility because Atlantic Christian wasn't obviously Division One even back then, so which is now Barton. So, um, but yeah, sixty four is the most that. So we're right there knocking at the door for uh, doing that. And you know what? Uh, hey, Bubba, how about the? Uh, if you look at the stats as far as the three point shooting uh, in our in the first half, we were, you know, we've been abysmal at, at three point shooting. And look, Bubba, how about that? I don't want you have to be a stats guy. Hey, uh, Kyle, nine out of 11 in the first half for three-point shooting, 81.8% from three-point land in the first yeah, half. That's great. Uh, you're going to win a lot of ball games if you can do that. Um, I, uh, I wish we hadn't taken so many threes in the second half. Um, needed, to, needed to run clock and take high percentage shots. Uh, so yep. Too many threes taken in the second half, let alone not making them. But uh, overall – uh, great performance on the offensive end. Yeah, how about Bubba? You talk about hot and cold. I was telling Kyle in the green room uh, before pre-show that we were 0 for 7 in the second half for three. So we didn't make a single three in the second half. Yeah, and you know, in the first half, you talk about 9 out of 11. You had Tristan Newton. Um, what, a performance, what a performance for him. Uh, you, you know he can shoot the basketball. It was great to see him knocked down five out of five from beyond the arc. And uh, he finished with a career high 30 points. Uh, so uh, he, he, he was one of three pirates in double figures on the afternoon. Uh, you also had Brandon Suggs who finished with, I believe it was 14. 15. Uh, fi- 15. Yes. 15, he had 15 in the first half and then scored the second. Rounds. And then you had, uh, it was Tremont Robinson white. Um, so another, Terrific performance by Pirate Guard. Um, it was obviously today a little little overshadowed by what Tristan did, but in 21 minutes, um, Tremont knocked down five out of six, three out of four from the line, and uh, also he had five steals. So 
14 points, five steals, three assists for uh, TRW. Hey, uh, Bubba, by the way, uh, we almost had five again, like last game with Canisius and double figures. You had Luigi Debo with eight and Vance Jackson with eight. So there, there's uh, a bucket away from five for those two guys from uh, five players again in double figures. So great, great offensive performance. Like Kyle said, Coach Dooley will hear him in a minute. Um, he wasn't too happy down the stretch. That second half, second part, if you will, of the second half, uh, especially there was a lot of shots taken, like Kyle said, that we didn't have to take, especially Bubba. I know you sent it in the group text, which is great. A good problem to have when you're up, what, 20, 25 points, and we have a huge lead and having to deal with lead when normally we would be down that much. Yeah, and, I, you know, you look at it. You, first of all, what you were saying about Luigi. Um, that was quite possibly his best game as a pirate. Um, it's definitely, yeah. definitely one of the top couple games he's had. Uh, you talk about in 17 minutes, four out of four from the floor for those eight points. You know, he pulled down three boards, also blocked three shots. Yeah, he looked great. And I tell you what, guys, uh, Kyle, I know his favorite new player is Winston Tabs. We still haven't seen, I'm worried about him. Maybe it's. Maybe they're just saving him, Bubba. I wanted to ask you that uh, here on no. the overtime. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely not just saving him. Um, I mean, what I'm saying is, I know, like saving him, saving. Him, what I'm saying is that he's not. He's hurt worse than he. He's worse than what we know, and they're they're trying to bring him back slowly and not just right. throw him well, in there. Right. Right. That's what right. From from what we've heard, it's um, uh, it's sickness, not not injury. Um, he, he had been injured, but um, right. from everything we've heard, he was over that and ready to play had had the, the sickness not occurred. Um, but according to um, you know, Jeff Charles' interview with, with, with him on the, the two games today, are you Man, guys the world back? I have no idea, right. but it was extremely distracting. <laughs> but, uh, Sorry. But, but getting the, uh, the post-game or pre-game remarks, from Coach Dooley, it seems very promising that uh, we'll have uh, some clarification on Winston Tab's situation very soon, and hopefully he'll be back for Thursday night against the Oklahoma Sooners, 7 o'clock, down in Conway in the Myrtle Beach Invitational quarterfinals. And by the way, as Kyle and I were talking about pre-show, Bubba, how about the fact that tournament, a lot of great competition, great for the Pirates here in the preseason, if you will, for the non-conference schedule. It's going to be on ESPNU. Yeah, um, in the second round, the, the Pirates uh, will be taking on either Old Dominion or Indiana State. And then you also have um, the likes of Davidson, Utah State, uh, Penn, um, who's typically very strong. Uh, so some, some very, very solid basketball programs, uh, both in recent history and just uh, throughout uh, the long term in this tournament. So it's going to be a very strong challenge and great opportunity for us to to show our improvement. Do you think there'll be uh, any conversations between Jonathan Gilbert and any uh, bowl officials while we're down there? Hey, that's a great <laughs> – I hadn't even thought about that, Kyle. That's, I had put two and two together. I've been looking at uh, hotels and uh, different things for Myrtle Beach uh, for that date. Uh, hopefully we can uh, – if we go there. But, you know, uh, it doesn't matter where we go. Um, let's just go to a bowl. What's that? That it kind of does. <laughs> but uh, well, what I I'm what saying is, in general. I'm happy yeah. to be. Yes, I'm happy to be in a bowl. Um, that are there places that I think make sense, and places that really don't make sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I guess we'll stay on track and uh, keep yeah. us focused to uh, the pirate basketball team for right now. I just thought I'd mention that because the uh, the timing of the trip down there. Hey, it's a, like a month out from the Myrtle Beach Bowl. The Myrtle Beach Bowl is December 20th. So you're looking at it just a, a little bit over a month before that bowl game. And I know they have tickets and everything. But anyway, uh, Bubba, I know with uh, tonight, uh, with this game or earlier this afternoon, I should say, uh, with 3-0, and the Pirates, one of the things that's impressed me is, like I was telling you guys, so far so good. The shooting – is a lot better than we had. I had a fan that I was talking to at halftime. He said, no disrespect to Jaden Gardner. He said, 
but finally I feel like that we have team basketball now. It's not everything. In other words, everything was centering around Jaden. But you look at Tristan Newton, you look at Brandon Suggs, Tremont Robinson White, and I know he had the injury, but he's, uh, as Coach was saying, the post game, I asked him about him. He's playing with a lot more confidence uh, now, and certainly you can see like the athletic ability bubble when you were talking about five steals. Um, he br- he brings a lot to the table, and it's ironic that he's the last two games I know for sure he's been coming off the bench. Yeah, you know. One of the reasons coming into this season that I was pretty optimistic, you know, a lot of folks just see, oh, Jaden Gardner left, and this is taking absolutely nothing away from Jaden Gardner because he's clearly an unbelievable player. Um, you know, his first two games at UVA he had double doubles, but uh, like you're saying, and like I heard other coaches say, uh, analysts, um, so much of the offense ran through Jaden Gardner when he got in foul trouble, a lot of times it would seem like we were lost. You look at tonight, and yes, it's um, it's uh, one thing to get in, get a, a lot of assists when you're knocking down shots, but in order to get a lot of good shots, and you have to share the ball well. And um, you know, Western Carolina was playing pretty solid man-to-man defense there early on, but the Pirates shared the basketball well. I think we had 17 or 18 of our 21 assists in the first half when we were. Uh, when we're knocking down nearly 70% of our shots. But uh, a lot of encouraging things, uh, even though he didn't have a ton of points. Uh, I'm trying to remember what he he, he finished with because um, tonight uh, we were able – or we were having a, a birthday party for, for my wife, Stacy. so I did not get to see uh, a whole lot of the second half. But, but R.J. Felton, I know uh, you look at his numbers, two out of nine and – 18 minutes, just four points, um, three assists. But kind of like you saw in the past um, with some of our uh, some of our young, promising talent, um, R.J. Felton, I, I love some of the things he brings to the table. Um, very strong for a true freshman, and uh, I think the, the sky's the limit for him. And um, a, a Brandon Johnson tonight. Not quite as good as he had been, but, you know, he still had eight points, six rebounds in 18 minutes. Uh, not not bad numbers. No doubt. And the coach um, even said, he, you know, it's not his best game. But still, he has the enthusiasm and the passion when he comes to the floor. I, I feel like it bring, uh, gives kind of like off the bench. That That's what I was going to ask you, Bubba. The bench play has been really, really good and surprisingly not just – the start. It's just like what we talk about with football, with having a good defensive line. Well, we got guys that you know two and three deep now that are playing well. Same thing with basketball now, where you have guys coming off the bench, quality players, and not just guys that you hold your breath for a couple minutes to give that star player a blow. You know. Yeah, you you feel like um, you know JJ Miles isn't hot, that somebody else can be. Um, you know, yeah. Tristan Tristan Newton can uh, can pick up the slack for TRW or vice versa. I mean, I mean it doesn't have to, you know, Jaden Garden, Jaden Gardner, um, like in the past, uh, when, when he had to give you 25 and 30 points on a pretty consistent basis. To, and play, what, 40 minutes, 35, 40 yeah, minutes? N- now the scoring can come from a ton of different places. Very much like in football uh, now, you see – very rarely do you see – a a pirate have more than seven or eight tackles in a game because you have a seven or eight guys have five or six tackles a piece. And I think you're going to kind of see that in basketball. Uh, you, you're going to see several guys in that 10, 12, 15 point range. No doubt about it. And uh, we're, we're looking yeah, at say, Dave. I was going to make a comment here. Um, Go ahead. You know, I think that's what I'm saying. Jake Gardner is going to be missed. But the best thing that could happen for everybody is for Jake to go on and put up big numbers at UVA and the Pirates to have their best basketball season we've had under the Joe Billy era without Jaden. Yeah, and that's totally possible. You know, when you and I were talking, Kyle, in the green room before the show about the schedule, 
Uh, we've got a lot of games on the schedule that we can win, including this uh, coming weekend. I think um, it's a tough, it's definitely a tough tournament, but uh, most certainly I think we can, uh, we can hang with a lot of those teams. How, how good is uh, Oklahoma guys? I, I, I've noted I'm not a basketball. They're a pretty good. Yeah, they're yeah, a pretty thought, good. Club. Are they top 25? Probably a, a fringe top 25 type of, yeah. type of team. Um, this one moment, and I, I do know um, the one result that I, I know for Oklahoma thus far, they beat UTSA, a future AAC member. Um, they beat them 96 to 44. Wow. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they shoot a lot of uh, – they're very good three-point shooting team, Kyle, so we've got to have our perimeter defense on Thursday night. That we, We've got to make sure that – um, it's a qual definitely a quality opponent. It, I know it's not just a football school that we're playing. It's they've got a good football hand basketball uh, program, and I believe uh, they were tournament team, right, Bubba? They have been. Um, my memory serves me right for March Madness, so um, definitely uh, one that we're gonna have to we're have our hands full. And Old Dominion's good. Davidson's usually good. I'm not sure this year about Indiana State, um, but there's yeah. a lot of a lot of good basketball. That's going back to focused. Oklahoma, going back to Oklahoma, um, they are two and zero. Uh, their their opener, they beat Northwestern State out of Louisiana, seventy seven to fifty nine, and then they put that fifty two point beat down on the Roadrunners of UTSA in game two. Uh, and so far, they have been led by 6'10", 235 pound forward um, or center, um, whichever he is, uh, out of out of Spokane, Washington. And that is Tanner Groves. And remember, their head coach is uh, Porter Moser, who had been uh, with the Loyola Ramblers and you know, taking the Ramblers uh, to a Final Four as well as what a Sweet 16. Yeah, that was uh, in the last few years, right? Uh, 2018. 2018, they went to the Final Four. First year of our podcast, That that uh, the very beginning of the podcast. That's how I remember that, and I believe was that nineteen or 20, 2020, right? They went to the Sweet Sixteen last year. I think that's right, something like that. But they've been they've they've done very well with uh, Loyola, and then he moves on to Oklahoma. So yeah, Kyle, they're they're a good team. Yeah, I um, well, it, it'll be a nice test. Um, you're you're going to play teams of that ilk in the American, so. Uh, it's a, it's a very nice test for us to see uh, how we stack up. Yeah, because you uh, you have a chance. Uh, some people may not realize it, Bubba, but um, not only we have a chance to play Old Dominion um, next weekend, but obviously right after uh, Thanksgiving and uh, the last day of November, we we have them in um, in Williams Arena. So you have a chance to play them two times, and. Uh, and about a two, potentially two times in a two week span. Right. And, um, yeah, Old Dominion, definitely a quality opponent and very excited to see the Monarchs back on the schedule. Put out the old CAA foe and one that uh, they've had a great program for a long time. They're not too far away from us. So a great opponent to have non conference and be cool to have them in conference. But anyway, um, for basketball, for sure, uh, we'll see how that turns out. And I know Bubba, we uh, we had a chance to go post game to with Coach Dooley, right? Absolutely. Um, everything looking ready to roll on your end, Dave. Yeah, it looks good. All right. All good. Yes. Uh, we got off to a good start. Obviously, shooting the ball. I thought our defense was. Solid. If we didn't give up second chance points, I think the first half we gave up uh, 19 points off the second chance. You know, all those trees obviously were a little bit of a problem that we didn't rebound. But I thought when we got stops and got out and ran, we were, we were very effective. Um, but the exception of the last few minutes, I thought our defense was really good. A lot of dribble drives in the second half that bothered us, but um, you know, that's something we can correct. Broken amount of a good number of assists and we didn't turn the ball up, which really helped. And I think those things always help. And not don't turn the ball up. They give them main transition opportunities. You forced 19 turnovers and you, you get eight, uh, eight, 10 steals here. 
good defense seemed to uh, translate into good offense in the first half. And, yeah, you know, we were a bit of a yeah. We got twenty five points off the turnovers, which is a good number. And I mean, it's, it's hard to withstand the team making seventeen threes and and the guys did a nice job. I mean, we did a we did a fair job in some sports of guarding the three point line. That amount of you know, forty six of their sixty three is a lot of attempts to defend. Uh, but I did think we. You know, we did a nice job of taking care of the ball, and once we rebounded in those situations, we did a good job of being effective in transition. What do you think about the physicality of your team? You guys um, were able to get uh, 48 of your points in the paint, but you were out rebounded by four. Discuss size, physicality, and what might need to be worked out. Well, we, we need to get better rebound, but those numbers are deceptive because of the way we shot the ball, especially the first half. You know, So I, I thought the guys did a nice job. We didn't do a great job of cleaning up. Our first shot defense in the first half was really good. It was a second shot defense. You know, our offensive rebounds that really bothered us. Um, you know, we did a nice job of, of you know, getting out in transition. But I, I do think that the rebounding deal is going to be an important deal in the second part of the First part of the question is we were able to get down and get to the rim, which we talked about. So I do think the points in the paint were a lot of more off of ball screen situations. They did a Western did a nice job in the second half of trapping the post. They came down and doubled the post. But I thought our big guys did a nice job of getting out of there and getting the ball first. Coach, can you talk about Tristan Newton? He had 30 tonight. Big night for him. He was he was terrific. I mean, I, I, I thought he, you know, he, he was very effective. Obviously, he shot the ball especially well in the first half. Uh, second half, uh, with the exception of one time, he didn't really settle. He got downhill. Um, you know, I think he's a guy that, that can continue to do those type of deals. We need him to be a playmaker and a distributor, but he's also got a knack to score like he did tonight. We need him to do that. Your postman, Luigi DeVoe, uh, got off to a good start tonight. He seems to be getting uh, better and better every ball game. You know, he, he, he struggled the first two games, and it, 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 we talked about it. He, he didn't look like he had, and I, I think tonight he – Got off to a confident start. He got the dunk to begin with. He had a nice tip. The two jump hooks, you know, he threw over his right shoulder in the second half were really good. But I think the other thing was he got some confidence. He rotated across, had a big block in the first half in front of our bench, got us out in transition, and um, he just played with a different level of confidence. I thought Zoe played good. He did some things. Brandon Johnson didn't have one of his better games, but his energy is still needed. And, uh, we just There's some things we can clean up, and we will clean up. Tremont Robinson White looked really good again, double figures tonight, and he seems to be more athletic. Uh, like, is he fully healed? I think he's full. I mean, that, that, that injury his first year was about yeah. as, uh, you know, I'd never seen it before, and I, I it, was, it took a little bit longer. I don't know that we had a prognosis on how long it was going to take, but even when you're healthy, it doesn't mean you're back to where you were. And I think he's more confident. We, you know, we see it every day in practice. He's, uh, he was aggressive, and he really impacts the game. And, you know, Flexes a lot of passes. He's around, you know, he knocks the ball off a guy's knee when the guy's getting a layup or he runs through a passing lane or he rotates across and, and just really is a, is a nuisance at times. Coach, it was pretty clear you know, early on that Western Carolina's game plan was kind of knock down threes. Uh, they only made 17 out of 46. How would you assess kind of your Pirates uh, from your defense? We did a, we did a, we, when we got back and got sorted, I think we did a good job. Um, we had a couple in transition, and it's a little bit different, you know, when, when you're when you're Luigi or you're Zoe or you're some of these other guys. They're not used to guarding that much. I you know 33 Petrakis is really out on the perimeter. When they played small with Robinson, you really had five guards out there. We had to make a decision. I, I like playing a big guy because it seemed like we could rebound and throw the ball inside, but it, it puts a strain on your defense because there's so many guys that you have to guard. All five of them can shoot it, and they will shoot it. But I thought for the most part, our, our guys were there. They made they made some really tough shots too, which I'm fine with. It just, it's going to happen. First three games in the book, um, after the season opener, you said there's definitely some things to work on. What do you think after the first three games, you start to see some things fall into place just a little bit? We need to maintain uh, some of the things we've done. I've been playing with the, sounds uh, strange, but sometimes playing with the big lead is hard to do. Uh, you take a little bit take a little bit off the gas now the flip side of sometimes and we've been in a situation where it gets a little easier to score when you're down that far uh, shots don't uh, there's not as much pressure I mean, we've been in that boat and I, I thought they did a really good job of continuing to compete and um, we you know we got a little impatient offense we have to learn at the end of the game you know shot the time score momentum run the clock a little bit more and take shots a little bit later in the clock especially those last four minutes coach can you talk about on Thursday you have the big Neutral site, the tournament with the Middle Beach Invitational. 
uh, with Oklahoma, a really good program. Yeah, great program. You know, top 50 net team, top 50 Ken Palm team. Uh, off to a good start, 2 no start. Uh, made a lot of threes, gave up 10 points and a half to Texas San Antonio yesterday, scored 60 some odd in the second half. I watched one of their exhibition games where they, I think they were 19 for 27 from three. So obviously guarding three point lines can be very important. And it's a good opportunity to play against a, a big 12 team. All right, that's comments from Coach Joe Dooley post game here. Uh, appreciate Coach very, very much. Thank you, Coach, for uh, for his. Uh, I appreciate his candor. I know that he's excited about uh, this group of guys and Bubba and Kyle. They really, uh, he's I think happy. This, uh, as you know, Kyle is year four for Dooley and a uh, tough year with COVID. Like I know we always say. Can't make excuses, but uh, so far so good. First week you're three and zero, and next week um, it was not you know what you wanted. Yeah, it was exactly what you wanted. Three and zero, great, 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 uh, great, uh, great start to the season. Uh, Dave, Bub, I don't know about y'all's in, but on my end the video, well, you couldn't see the video. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, we need to promote that. Uh, we'll have that up on YouTube. Uh, for those listening, it doesn't the matter. audio is great, which is really what you want to You really want to hear Dooley. I mean, looking at Joe Dooley is no prize for anyone, but, but hearing him talk was uh, was what you wanted, and uh, uh, the audio is great. So, But uh, uh, obviously next week the competition steps up a little bit, though Kinesis, man, they uh, they took it yeah. to St. Bonaventure's for almost – almost pulled off a big upset tonight. The Bonnies came back and, and, and pulled away, but uh, – that's the top 25 program in St. Bonaventure and Kinesis uh, uh, gave them all they wanted. So, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to see, you know, White, Western gave Wake a game. So um, you never know. Um, sometimes teams are surprisingly good. We'll know a lot more about ourselves after uh, this tournament in Myrtle Beach. No doubt about it. And uh, hopefully we can uh... – <clears throat> Hopefully we can, what we can do is just keep, uh, we, we talked about keep building, keep building. Um, but certainly when it comes to once you get to the end of December and you get that AAC play in January, that conference play, uh, last year we took care of business, guys. We were, what, 7-1, and one, Bubba, um, and then COVID struck. So we had such a great start. Love to see that again, guys, uh, build from last year. I know those guys were chomping at the bit. They had no practice, no practice or games for 20 some days in February. So hopefully they can uh, build from that and be hungry as they say, when it comes to this season. Yeah, that's one of the things this program, uh, I think it was kind of overlooked just because of the way COVID wreaked havoc with our season. And we finished eight and 11 and um, I guess what, what went one and 10 down the stretch after that seven and one start. But um we didn't have Dooley. We didn't have players. It was just – it was really bad. I mean, I know that you are what your record is, but at the same time, there was a lot of circumstances that we normally don't have to deal with. The point I was going to make, though, is uh, we were 6-0 and in the non-conference last season because then we, we lost our conference opener and then we won our yeah. won our next conference game against Tulane, I think it was, or somebody – um, cause we had, we had lost to SMU out there in the opener, but, um, point being that we've, I think won what nine straight non-conference games now. So, so some of those programs that we've historically struggled with, uh, regional teams, like, you know, whether it's Western Carolina or, uh, you know, Radford, UNC, Wilmington, Appalachian State, App State, and, you know, Charlotte. We're, we're, we're beating programs like that now. And, that's a sign that this program is slowly but surely getting to where we want it to be. No doubt about it. And uh, you know, I'm happy for Coach Dooley being year four. I know, Kyle, we've talked about this. Uh, this is a big year for Dooley. And um, certainly I know it's in the back of his mind, but you want to see progress. And um, our friend B. Pace says 16 games. If you could go from 8-11 and 11 to winning, what is that, Bubba, 16 and – uh, that would be maybe 16 and four. Well, I guess you have 30 some games because you have the regular season plus the ter- um, the AAC tournament. If we didn't make uh, a postseason tournament after the conference tournament, um, but 16 games will be a, a huge improvement. No doubt. Yeah, so if we can win 16, uh, would, would, I guess that would give us a winning season in uh, yes. in, in the regular season. Yeah, that's correct. 
Yeah, uh, that'll be a couple uh, games over 400, uh, 500. Pretty, pretty, pretty sure we play an even 30. Yeah, 30 so plus. 16. So, so obviously, 16 and obviously, that would make us 16 and 14 going to the uh, AAC tournament. Well, that would be uh, that would be a great accomplishment. We with a lot of a lot of basketball left to be played, but it's, you got three of them in the back. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. Three out of the sixteen we got in one week. Um, it'll be interesting though that, that we're, we're going to have to do very well uh, to have that sixteen. My gut feeling is we're going to have to. What do you think, Bubba? Uh, Kyle, you think break even on this? Uh, is it is it a? Um, that's what I'm confused on. Is it a? Uh, round robin kind of thing, or is it a um, single elimination a tournament? No, being this? Um, it's bracket play, you know. Okay, I mean, bracket play. Okay, like, yeah, because it's it's Indiana State or Old Dominion. Uh, you know, depending on the winner. Okay, okay. depending okay. on what we do, you know, um, you get the winner and the loser, depending on whether we win or lose. And then on the opposite side of the bracket, um, you give me a minute, and I'll get I'll tell you those other teams. But I know three of the four. It's Penn, Davidson, and then Utah State. I'm trying to remember the the fourth. Okay. Yeah, so that next week we're going to have to really play well. Um, if you can get a couple wins uh, in, in that tournament or a win um, in there, um, but that would be fantastic because we're going to have to put that towards uh, – I'm going to go with B. Pace. He's, he's bullish on the Pirates, and I think – uh, judging by it's week one, but off to a great start, and that will be fantastic uh, to see that, no doubt about it, especially and, for these players. Go ahead, Bubba. And, Dave, that other – the eighth team uh, that I could not think of is New Mexico State. So, That's very, right. very, very strong basketball tradition there for New Mexico State. Um, so, th this is a heck of a field and a, a step up from uh, – you know, it's not uncommon for us to play in a tournament this time of year. But uh, this is definitely uh, a big step up from the ones that we typically play in. It's on TV. Yeah, ESPNU. I mean, come on. That's fantastic yeah. for this program and definitely a great challenge. Uh, that's what you want, though, is these guys are competitors. And um, it gives the uh, – especially these young guys, Kyle, that are coming in, uh, these younger players, it will give them a lot of uh, playing time plus – It'll be great to see if I'm praying that Winston Tabs will finally get his debut as a pirate on Thursday night. That would be fantastic. I'm not sure on that, but that would be great to see. Yeah, time will tell. And uh, anytime you get an opportunity to play in Oklahoma, a Big 12 school, a name brand program, if you will, um, it's a big opportunity. And maybe the Pirates can pull it off and stay in the winner's bracket. I'd, I'd love to make a championship game. I'd love an opportunity to play Davidson. Um, Oh man, it's, it's something we, we we never play them. They're an in-state school. Love uh, them. School that I would love to see us play non-conference semi-regularly, and uh, so I think we would have to make the championship game to do that. Yeah, they're on the other yeah. side, so that's correct. And they, um, they, I mean, Davidson's one of the best, not only in the state but in the country. So, uh, no doubt, it'd be a great test for us for any of those teams. I can't wait for it. I know that. Uh, we had Brandon Suggs and Tristan Newton. Tristan Newton, a guys, again, 30 points, a career high, five for five in the first half from threes. I mean, he was just unbelievable. Took it to back. He, um, what I was amazed at one point while uh, I know Bubba's getting the, that uh, video ready, um, Kyle, I wanted to make is when you see a guy like Tristan Newton in the past, uh, you would see guys wide open and they would uh, take the shots. Uh, and they were wide open. They miss a lot of those shots. So people would just say, okay, we're going to leave you wide open because they're not going to make the shots. Well, now you got a kid like you got a kid like uh, Tristan Newton that was just burying them. They left him open. He's burying them, burying them, burying them. And it was great to see. Yeah, Newton had a big night. Hopefully that was something to continue and he'll, he'll be a consistent, uh, you know, uh, shooting threat for us all year. Um, I uh, it's hard to match tonight's total of 30 points, but uh, if he, if he can be a consistent shooting threat for us, um, uh, that'll obviously be a good thing. And uh, you know, like I said, uh, we we've looked surprisingly good in my opinion so far. And then we get uh we get Tab, the kid from Boston College, put up a lot of big numbers in the ACC. Uh, finally, mm -hmm. hopefully this weekend, time will tell. And 
you hope he just adds to things and it don't become a Jaden Gardner type situation where we try to run everything through him. Right. And, uh, and he just adds to, uh, to the production. And now about speaking of uh, Tristan Newton, by the way, uh, Bubba, I know we had the post game audio uh, video rather with uh, Brandon Suggs and Tristan Newton. And are you ready for that? Yep. Um, like we mentioned, um, three Pirates and double figures tonight. Tristan Newton, 30 points, six rebounds, six assists. Brandon Suggs, 15 points and six rebounds. And let's hear from those two right now. You guys ready? Fire away. Tristan, big night for you. Uh, talk about what's working for you tonight a little bit. Uh, well, the first half, uh, I just hit, I hit five threes in the first half. And I think it was all off catch and shoot. So really just my teammates. Uh, just find me open. Second half, they just had to keep going, so that's what I did. I really cut down a lot of weight. Like, last year I was like 25, and now I'm like 180. So I feel like I'm moving better. And assist, that's really my teammates. They're making shots, get back doors and all that. And rebound is just, just going to get the ball, so that's really it. First three games done, um, shaking off the nerves, um, shaking off the rest of the offseason, starting to play in front of fans again. What do you guys think the first weekend? Well, it's been good. It's been fun. We missed the fans. So it's always fun having a crowd. But I feel like they're making us go harder, pushing us. Because we don't want to let everybody down. Brandon, you had another great night, 15 points, I believe. Um, How does it feel out there? Oh, yeah, you know, I just do my job. I ain't going really to worry about scoring for real. I'm, I'm more of a defensive guy. So I like, if scoring come for me, it just come for me. I ain't going to be tripping them. Brandon, you guys are up uh, 28, and all of a sudden, two teams kind of took turns making runs at each other, and they end up cutting, cutting down under 20. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about what was happening there like. Got too comfortable, man. Just got comfortable. Happy with success. We should we ain't stay on them. Like, just have like the, um, what did we play? Um, the last two years, yeah, like the same thing. We just got to learn how to stay, like not let the teams like, get the light of day. When they fight, they come back. We just got to. And that's going to that's gonna happen with more chemistry, more games. We'll be all right. You bring up chemistry, you know, you, it's your first three games, a lot of new faces. What do you think about learning each other's games, a lot of new additions to the team in the offseason? How's that been going? And are you guys seeing progress even? Yeah, I feel like uh, in the game you learn more about, like, chemistry than practice. Like, practice, I feel like you, it's not, you that ease at practice. So, like, it's like when, you, uh, when you're in a game environment, you know what people are going to do and how they're going to step up. So, I feel like the chemistry is wrong because we all trust each other and all just want to win. Big difference between practice speed and game speed, right? Correct. I mean, like, not uh, kind of, sort of. Like, I feel like in practice we go hard, though. Like, we all trying to make each other better. So, um, I feel like it's more physical at practice. So, I mean, like, we make a tough layups and all that. It's just because we don't call fouls in practice. So, it's just we're used to stuff like that. You guys shot really well tonight, again, from the free throw line. I think it was, like, 81, just shot under 82%. Uh, you guys, that's a great way to get a lot of points. I smoke, I smoke too low, so I feel like we would have been at like about 88. <laughs> so I apologize. What about this uh, coming week? You have the Myrtle Beach Invitational starting on Thursday, a neutral court site, a lot of great competition coming up, starting right. with Oklahoma. Yeah, I feel like we just got to play the same, guard, shoot open shots, pass the ball, and uh, rebound. And I feel like we'll, we can compete with anybody. When was the last time you guys faced a team that – Shot 46 three pointers in probably like high school. Yeah, hey, you for me. I don't think that. I don't have, have we ever been facing anybody who shot 46 threes? I can't remember. Yeah, That's so true. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. But a lot. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Nice All right, thanks. All right, post game comments there from Brandon Suggs and Tristan Newton. Tristan Newton with a big night again, 30 points. Brandon with 15. Uh, guys, great again, great start uh, for the Pirates. Feeling good about it. Uh, obviously, the next game we talked about Thursday night, ESPNU, and that'll be against Oklahoma, the Myrtle Beach Invitational. And the, at that time is at 7 o'clock, by the way, 6 30 airtime. Uh, for Jeff Charles and Michael Perry. I had a chance to listen to Coach Perry.
did a great job today and uh, glad that he's a broadcast partner now with Jeff Charles on the Learfield uh, Pirate Sports Radio Network. So appreciate them very, very much and uh, look forward to uh, listening and watching the game on Thursday night. Guys, do you have anything before we go? Uh, no, not not on my end. Just a uh, good, good start to the season 3-0 and got the Sooners uh, Thursday night on the U. So, uh, good coverage. Uh, glad to be playing on ESPNU. Um, seems like uh, not as many television games the last uh, last season. I don't know how the TV schedule was looking this season. I know there's a lot more ESPN Plus games with the current American contract. So, uh, good to be on the U for a non-conference game. I don't know what the rest of the TV schedule looks like for that tournament. If we're going to be on, if you say, do you guys know? Is it does it depend on if we win or lose? What does what does the rest of the TV look like for that tournament for our bracket? Uh, I'd have to double check it, Kyle, but I I think that um, the majority of these games are on either ESPNU or ESPN2, so I I feel uh, pretty pretty confident that we'll at least get a couple, if not three games on um, actually, you know, on the U or the Deuce. That's great. That's great exposure and uh, nothing wrong with ESPN+. Plus. I mean, nowadays, more and more. I mean, the NHL – it's now a featured product on ESPN Plus as people are switching to streaming more and more. But uh, it's, it's still good to be on the lineal, linear, linear uh, platforms from the television standpoint for uh, for basketball. No doubt. And uh, by the way, very excited about the Pirates Bowl eligible. Bub, I know that we'll have our um, do some programming notes here before we go. We have um, promoing uh, the TSO locker room, uh, Jaira Sugg, uh, Jaira Wilson, I should say, and uh, – also, uh, how about the performance of the Pirates with Ryan Jones on offense? Uh, very excited to have them on uh, most likely tomorrow, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, things are subject to change with their schedules academically. Um, we, we, we shoot for Monday, and then if we need to adjust, uh, we you know, call an audible and, and have it when we can have it. But uh, look forward to catching up with those two gentlemen once again. Ryan Jones, another solid game, four catches, 70 yards. Um, the big one there that uh, I guess what is late in the first half. Unfortunately, that was one of those times that we had to settle for a chip shot field goal, but uh, a heck of a catch there late in the first half. Hey, sorry, we would not have won the game. Yep. Hey. And, um, and that's something that Owen Daffer – uh, uh, you know, some some folks may kind of kind of shrug it off just because they were shorter field goals, but um, look no further than Memphis's situation and uh, mm-hmm. them opting to go for two uh, because uh, of their shaky kicking game. And Owen Daffer now, I don't know exactly, but what he's something like fourteen out of fifteen under under forty yards. Uh, so. So if he can maintain that consistency and you know extend his range a little bit, maybe get a little uh, a little more trajectory, get it and get the kicks up a little faster on those mm-hmm. longer longer kicks, and and uh, and be a be a weapon from forty to fifty. Man, uh, what a, what a weapon we have in Owen Daffer. We thought about trying a forty-five yarder yesterday, and uh, and coach decided to go for it. Um, yeah. I don't know if you, you guys remember, remember that. that. We were talking. We were talking about it. Um, yeah. Had the timeout, and and we were like, "What what are we going to do here?" And I said, "I saw Coach Houston say offense. You're on the field." Yeah. 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 I, I, I uh, we're interested in trying, and then I wanted to touch on this, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday post game show. Then we'll get the hell out of here. It's time to go to bed. But uh, well, that last offensive possession for us in regulation, there was a lot of people questioning clock management, why we didn't run more time off the clock. And in general, I would agree with that statement 100%. Because if you run 20 more seconds off the clock, if, if Holton just takes 20 seconds off the clock before he snaps the ball, they have to try that field goal instead of going forward on fourth and one. They would have had to try the field goal from further back because of time constraints. And they would have maybe missed it and we would have won it in regulation. But – Here's the thing. We struggled in the red zone immensely yesterday. And I don't think Coach Houston wanted to let those guys have any time to think about it and start and start messing with their heads, have the offensive line jump off sides, have, have hold. You, you never know. So when you're struggling in the red zone like we had been, I, I don't think you want to screw with it. Had we been dominant, you know, in the red zone, uh, we wouldn't have been in that situation. But 
I, I think in that particular situation, go ahead and just get in the score it is, uh, was the right call. Otherwise, I would agree that, uh, yeah, you need to bleed some clock down there. Right. Like like you're saying, if it was a yeah. high-scoring game uh, like several years ago, Cincinnati, for instance, and that's one that comes to mind um, way back in the Ruffin McNeil era. But you know, just generally speaking, a higher-scoring game uh, where we had scored a lot of touchdowns in the red zone and, uh, and also not stopped the opponent as well as we had been stopping Memphis outside of a couple of big plays. Um, but I, under the circumstances, I was perfectly fine handling it and going with the approach that we did because main thing, we had to get points and uh, had to get that touchdown. No doubt we had had settled for three instead of seven a lot during the day and going and punching that in, it put pressure on, it put pressure on them, you know, and uh, you're exactly right, Kyle, and Bubba, if you, if you don't score there or, uh, you know, here you're, it's kind of a catch 22 damned if you do damned if you don't what imagine, uh, imagine the fan base, if they had uh talk about t- uh, clock management, imagine if we tried to do that and then we don't score and lose the game in regulation. Well, I, I don't, I don't think you burn it as in, as an in intentionally don't get it in the end zone. I, I think what some people didn't know is why we didn't at least bleed the clock. On, on on the on the first and goal there, uh, bleed yeah. it down few seconds and then snap it, or and then you know that kind of situation. But uh, I just don't think you, in that situation you wanted the guys to think about it. And hats off to the defense on that last drive. Oh man! Because what we did do is keep them out of the end zone, and uh, they had the you know and I, you know I, I, I guys and Bob, I'll ask you this, and then we'll wrap this up with the football discussion. Um. On, on that last offensive possession for Memphis, um, when they ran the ball and then kicked the field goal, did he pick up the first down there? I, I thought he was short. Honestly, uh, I remember you talking about that yesterday on the Pirate Football Playback. I'd have to go back and look at it. <laughs> that game was such a blur, you know, so so many twists and turns, yeah. so, so up and down. I do not remember. Okay. It was definitely a roller coaster. Had he been short, the clock should have ran out. So I don't know, but we, we won it in overtime, and it was great to win it like we did. And and, and it's still, and that's why I worry about uh, this game against Navy because my mind's still reliving that final play and thinking about going to a bowl. And so uh, it is concerning to me: Are we going to be focused in on Navy? This is a game you got to be extra focused on the defense side of the ball in particular. And uh, I hope we are. I really hope we are. And there's no doubt that is the case. But um, very quickly, something I told Matt Semenza earlier today, I told him uh, I certainly understand where you're coming from as far as uh, facing the triple option, you know, coming off such an emotional high. But at the same time, it could be a good thing because it could be, uh, you know, a 180. And what I mean by that is that by facing the offense like we're facing, that could bring our guys back to where they need to be mentally. Um mm-hmm. And emotionally, much, much, much more quickly, because they know, hey, if we if we aren't locked in, we're going to go up to Annapolis and get embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish it the other way around. I'd rather play Cincinnati this week. I think coming off of a game like this, and then having all the confidence in the world going into Cincinnati would be perfect, and then close the season with Navy. I wish we could flip the games around, but I, I do see what you're saying, Bubba, and uh, we'll we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Hopefully the guys will be locked in and we'll, we'll get the W. We're four point favorites, uh, so Vegas kind of thinks it's going to be a close game. Um, and historically they would be right. Actually, historically they'd be wrong. Normally Navy spanks us. So uh, they lost by touchdown last time, right? Last year, yeah, 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 last year. But uh, let's uh, let's um, let's go to Annapolis and take care of business and have the opportunity to go back to Annapolis in a, in a few weeks. <laughs> That's right. We're playing the military bowl twice. Uh, we told you about uh, promo and a couple more things. We'll get out of here. We told you about the TSO locker room with uh, Jaira Wilson and with Ryan Jones. We'll catch up with them. And then on Tuesday, we have Mike DeCourcy, of course, uh, from the Sporting News and the Big Ten Network, talking college basketball. And a friend of ours, Kim McNeil, the coach, uh, the women's coach of ECU, uh, we'll have her on as well. Uh, for Tuesday night show and on Thursday, Bubba for our pirate preview. 
Very excited, excited to have the play-by-play -play voice of the Navy midshipman, Pete Medhurst. He's been with us for a long time on the show and uh, coming on uh, for Navy football for the last two or three years now. So looking forward to catching up with Pete and a lot of exciting things. This is a busy time, guys, no doubt. Yeah, anytime East Carolina and Navy get together, we always enjoy catching up with Pete. Uh, so we'll do that, like you said, on Thursday. And then looking forward to that conversation with Michael DeCourcy. He's been a regular uh, the early part of basketball season in particular over the last two or three basketball seasons. So um, look forward to this, uh, you know, annual chat um, with Mike DeCourcy of the Sporting News and Big Ten Network. And I, I know he will be able to um, you know, share some knowledge on these teams down in the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Right now, guys. Uh, all right. Uh, good, good game again for the Pirates, 95-79 over Western Carolina. Kyle, man, thank you for staying up late. I know it's uh, it's almost past our bedtime. Bubba, thanks for all your hard work, man. Appreciate you so much. Until next time, the TSO Locker Room tomorrow. You've been watching Pirate Basketball Overtime right here on the Sports Objective. Good night, everybody. Go Pirates!